Hey there home chefs, today I want to take you through the perfect blueprint for risotto and why this can be any home chef's best friend. By taking a flavour and mixing it into the formula that guarantees amazing risotto, you can up your chef game by having the confidence to experiment with ingredients and create new dishes over and over again and without ever having to reference a recipe once you nail down this process. Now, the first step actually comes before the blueprint. Risotto rice is different to your normal grain rice like basmati and it cooks differently as a result. You're normally going to come across two different types, Arborio and Carnarelli. They're a shorter grain but much more absorbent without turning mushy. You have to choose carefully between them because, well not really, both create nice thick risotto. Apparently Carnarelli contains more starch and produces a creamier result, but if you ask me it's a tiny difference. Arborio tends to be more available, so go for whichever you can get. Oh, and if you're looking for the ingredients and quantities, I've left them down in the description for you. Now onto the blueprint. Risotto starts with the aromatics. The dish is bland and dull if you miss this step. It seems obvious, but when it comes to a rice dish, it's easily forgotten about. So your first step is onion and garlic. Get them very finely diced so they melt into the creamy finish. You can even grate them, but be warned this will lead to tears. So many tears. Right, we start by sauteing the onion only. We can enhance this at this point by adding some like grated celery too, which is a great source of flavor. But for a base, onion is gonna get you there. And once that's sweat out and translucent, in goes the minced garlic. And in the unlikely event that your camera's battery dies at that exact moment, don't forget to turn down the heat. Otherwise your garlic, it will burn. This is the worst. <laughs> now we can add our risotto rice. And you wanna get the grains coated in all that olive oil. So pour in a bit more if needed. This helps the grain keep its texture as well as enhance the flavor. After a minute or so, it's time for our next key ingredient, white wine. Where possible, use this if you can. The acidity really helps balance against the creaminess, but most importantly, it helps extract more of the starch, which is what produces that creaminess. Think using pasta water in sauces. Now you want to cook off the alcohol, but keep the flavor. So keep everything going for a few minutes, and then we can bring in the ingredient, which basically makes the whole dish the stock. Mostly it's recommended to use chicken stock, as that carries that extra bit of flavor, but really any stock works. And I just so happen to have some homemade vegetable stock from a previous video, so that is going to be perfect for this. Using a hot stock here is crucial, as cold stock takes much longer to be absorbed and can mean the rice overcooks. Add just a small ladle to begin with and stir the rice around until it's become fully absorbed. Adding it too quickly will prevent the rice from being able to absorb it properly and you'll be left with a soupy consistency rather than a nice, thick, creamy risotto. Now before you add the next ladle, stop right there. Here is where you take the risotto to the next level. This is your missing step in the risotto formula, your main flavor. Whatever your flavor risotto is, mushroom, beetroot, pumpkin, now is the time to introduce it. And it's that time of year, I have some leftover pumpkins from good old Halloween. So with some butternut squash, I can make a lovely wintry root veg risotto. For any kind of veg enhancement, you're gonna to wanna to roast them and then get everything pureed to mix into that risotto properly. You can save some of the flesh for the end if you want, but I like everything smooth and consistent, so I'm adding it all in. Use a touch of your stock and a high power blender to get the best smooth puree. Once that's in, it's all about patience adding the rest of the stock. There's no point trying to do this last minute and rushing it, as it just will not turn out well. So grab your iPad, put on your favorite show, and just take stock of life. Eh? Get it? Anyway, little by little, add it and let it absorb. Stirring regularly, but it doesn't have to be non-stop. And while we do that, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, as Home Chef's got to stick together and I wouldn't want you missing out on more content like this. The ratio you want to stick to for perfect risotto is about three to one stock to rice. So with 225 grams of risotto rice, about three portions, you will want around 775 milliliters of stock. So given so much of the final product is stock, the higher quality your stock, the better it will taste. But don't worry, store-bought is still gonna be banging. Once that's done, you should have a near perfect consistency that's like a rich, creamy custard housing all that risotto. But it's not quite perfect as the final step is to finish with cheesy goodness. Mascarpone is a beautiful Italian sort of cream cheese which gives any risotto that perfect finish. A bit of that mixed in elevates the whole thing to that home chef standard we're looking for. Silky, creamy, perfect. Kill the heat so the rice stays a nice al dente and now normally at this stage it would be seasoned with salt and pepper to taste kind of thing but we can get our saltiness improved through some parmesan or parmigiano reggiano. A large block grated in brings extra texture, flavor, and provides a salt hit to enhance the whole thing. Let that melt in, and now you've got the perfect risotto. Let's plate up. Now, the Home Chef formula only gets you so far. It's one thing to make the perfect risotto, but presenting it is a whole different game. 
let your creativity shine with some extras on top, garnishes, or even the plate itself. If you want more family style, keep it in the pot you're using. Add some garnishes like sage leaves if you're doing something autumnal, some cracked black pepper across as well for effect, and for a touch of luxury if you want to impress, try adding some brown sage butter. It's incredibly simple, just heat up some butter with a few sage leaves in it until it turns brown. A delicious nuttiness comes through and the sage blends in perfectly. And that just adds another depth to your dish and looks incredible as well. If you're serving individual portions, the traditional flat plate works well, allowing the risotto to spread out and then top with the usual garnishes. You can even take some of the crisp cooked sage leaves from the butter as a little edible treat. Another extra that always works well is some crispy bacon. The crispiness adds a nice texture, the color contrast adds visuals, and it's bacon, so it's gonna be good on top. And finally, if you're having this to yourself, my go-to is a nice dark bowl. Makes the risotto stand out, easy to hold, and what more do you need? So there we go. A foolproof blueprint you can rely on for perfect creamy risotto guaranteed. You can experiment with to your heart's content. I really hope all you home chefs can put this formula to use. Let me know in the comments what flavors you're planning on trying out. Until then, get cooking and I'll see you in the next video.